Okay, I decided to make two videos this week because for the past couple episodes I've done, every time I get done filming, I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to freaking mention this or mention that. So, uh, this is the second video, is just kind of some of the stuff that I've missed on point and I needed to bring up or wanted to show you guys. Uh, for one, the homemade diaphragm spring collapsing tool that I made worked wonderful. I was able to collapse the spring down a lot further than I was before without snapping it. Everything went together real well. All it is is a, a proper sized hole saw. I ground the teeth off, welded a washer to the top as centered as possible. It's a threaded rod, some washers. you got to grind down one washer so it fits tightly in where the throwout bearing goes. But when you do that, you can put a lot more pressure on it than if you had a loose fitting uh, washer in there. So this worked really well. And like I said before, uh, the tool to do this is 65 to 85 dollars and I managed to build this one um, for less than twenty dollars. So I mean it's really your choice. You can buy the tool to have it or just make this. I mean it's cheap enough so even if you break it you can replace it easily. So definitely worth taking your time on that. Uh, second thing, uh, I ran into something on the bike when I was doing the clutch. Um, when I did the clutch originally, something was misaligned, and basically the clutch wouldn't engage. But I had already soaked my clutch plates in oil, and then all the oil ran out because I never torqued the case down because it wasn't working right. Um, and basically what happened was the clutch plates became what I call oil locked. They were stuck together so even after I did it properly this time the clutch would kinda work but not completely. Um, there's two ways to fix this. Another common thing are rusted clutch plates. Um, and From what I've heard online there's two ways to fix it other than tearing it all out, replacing your clutch plates. Make sure the uh, primary case is full of you know the proper oil um, you can put your bike up against the wall and start it and then put it into gear. Um, that will most times break the rusted plates free so that they work properly. It would work on oil locked plates. Um, all I did was started it up last night after I got the carburetor back on it and pulled the clutch in, dropped it into first gear and the whole thing just worked great. It, the clutch freed up, the plates aren't stuck anymore, and you know, so the clutch is working great. Um, carburetor took some time. Uh, I noticed uh, when I first put the carburetor back on the bike that I wasn't getting fuel into it because the float bowl was empty. So I did what I call priming the carburetor or choking out the carburetor. I took my hand I placed it over the air intake and over the choke and I turned it over a couple times and when you feel the gas hit the, you know, the palm in your hand you know that the carburetor is primed and then it's just a matter of fiddling with your uh, idle fuel and your air mixture and your choke to get it running so that you know okay all I gotta do is you know turn it on now and it's gonna run great. Um, I'll get into more detail another time as to how to finish tuning this. Uh, do not tune this on a cold bike. It's a waste of time. Bike has to be running temperature. Um, another thing, I, I said carburetor cleaner works great on these carbs. Uh, another little household secret that most people don't know about is if your carburetor is really gummed up in technically any part, you know, grease, gunk, whatever, if you soak it in straight pine saw, that actually gets in and eats out all that gunk and blockages. And a little side effect to that is for a while with your bike running after you clean it out and everything, uh, it's going to smell like pine saw. A uh, neat little trick I learned when I was dealing with the SNS carb because it got really gunked up one time. Uh, let me see, I got kind of a cheat sheet going here because I keep forgetting stuff. Uh, oh yeah, and before, if you're going to go through the trouble of cleaning the spark plug or cleaning the carburetor, either clean your spark plugs or replace them before you try starting the bike. 
These spark plugs get fouled out really quick on these Harley, especially the Sportsters. You know, I like to get as much life out of a spark plug as I can. So I pull it out, I clean it with some carb cleaner, I sand it, regap it, just make sure it's all clean. And it hasn't let me down. I go through spark plugs, you know, I change them out like every two, maybe three years, if I can get that much life out of them. Uh, it really doesn't hurt anything to do it that way, and it saves a few bucks. So the choice is really yours if you want to go through that. Um, I also wanted to show you guys that the bike does run. Everything I did last night, all I did was hooked it up. I haven't messed with anything. So I'm going to show you it running, and that will pretty much be the end of the video in a second. Okay, all you do, obviously, if you got a bike, you should not have started it. Switch on, switch down here on, and I'm going to put the choke at quarter. That should be enough. I like to prime mine two turns of the, uh, the throttle. Oh, one more thing. Open the door. Do not start your bike in a closed garage. Think smart, people. And hit the start button. See, I barely hit that start button, started right up. Um, another thing, they do not recommend that you tune your carburetor with the air filter off. The only reason I do it is I like being able to see what the hell I'm working on. Uh, with the air filter on, you really can't see what you're dealing with sometimes. Uh, but really, it's do it at your own risk. You can risk sucking something into the carburetor that's going to mess it up. Now, I haven't had that problem yet, so I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Obviously, don't run your bike long top periods without an air filter. That's just common sense. So, I touch base on everything I you know, keep forgetting over, the, over time. Um, I did visit the DeSoto yesterday. It's finally melting out of the snowbank. Still can't open the doors. Still haven't found the front clip to it, but... Uh, hopefully in another few days of this 40 degree weather, I'll be able to get into it and start taking parts out of it. Um, with that said, we'll see you next week and thanks for watching.